The Russian president Vladimir Putin, so a lot of people on the outside, might appear as a sort of a strong leader who is a man of very strong convictions that is able to always defend himself against those pesky liberal journalists. And we can see a ton of this on YouTube, for example, those Putin badass compilation videos in which he's essentially going into these governmental factories and pretending to be hard on corruption in these staged videos. And also, there's a ton of videos of Putin destroying Western journalists or whatever. However, the truth is that Vladimir Putin really does not like being asked uncomfortable questions. And in Russia, every single public appearance of Vladimir Putin when he might get asked any questions, the media essentially has to pre-approve these questions with the Russian government. And for example, in the annual press conference that Vladimir Putin usually throws, even the Russian citizens that are calling in with questions have to essentially approve those questions first so that the president does not get too upset. And best of all, since the year 2000s, when Vladimir Putin came to power, he has not participated in even a single presidential debate. So basically, Russian propaganda and media are set up in a way that the president never looks uncomfortable or is essentially never outsmarted in front of the camera. However, there was only one person that managed to challenge Putin right to his face on camera. What is up everybody, it is your boy Roman, your favorite neighborhood Russian, and in today's video guys, we are going to be looking at the legendary debates between Vladimir Putin and Yuri Shevchuk. So essentially to give you guys some context, here's what happens. Basically in 2010, a certain sort of public meeting of Vladimir Putin with the leaders of, you know, the culture and art sphere of Russia, essentially a bunch of Russian celebrities, was organized in the form of a kind of dinner party, and one of the people of significance that was invited to this dinner party was actually Yuri Shevchuk, one of the creators and the frontman of a very, very famous rock band in the 80s and 90s in Russia called DDT. And this band is just absolutely huge. They have like a cult following and everything. And Yuri Shevchuk, as a person throughout the years, has never really shied away from criticizing the Russian government. Как я не включаю телевизор в вашу программу? Все время вот эти все ваши мысли. С утра до ночи. Вы заводите народ. На что? На войну? Я был на всех войнах локальных. Я был в Сербии, и был в Косово, и был в Чечне, и там, и сям, Таджикистан, Афганистан. Насмотрелся. Вот. И что вы предлагаете? Пойти войной на Украину, на Грузию? Вот я говорю, вы призываете к войне. Recently, after the start of this special operation, Yuri Shevchuk has been speaking out against the actions of the government's laws, and right now he's actually fully banned from performing in Russia because of his political views, even though he's like one of the biggest legends of Russian rock. And in 2010, Yuri Shevchuk was the exact person that challenged Putin right to his face. Now let's check it out, shall we? Просто мне был бы завчера звонок, и меня ваш э, помощник, наверное, какой-то, я не помню его имени, попросил не задавать вам острых вопросов, политических. Это, это, это как вас зовут? Юра Шевчук. Юра, это провокация. <laughs> okay, look, I have a lot to say about this one. First of all, Shevchuk starts off the conversation by saying that yesterday he got a call before the meeting from somebody essentially telling them to not ask the president any pressing questions. Because once again, like I said, Vladimir Putin does not like hearing anything but praise, which I find totally believable. And Yuri Shevchuk here actually elaborated on this later in an interview. Когда вам позвонили? Вот тот таинственный человек, который сказал... Ну вот как раз сзади. До этого это меня немножко так разъярило. Вежливо говорил или дерзко? Вежливо, вежливо. Владимир Владимирович так устал. Пожалуйста, не задавайте какие-то вопросы. Да я говорю, ну, а, а смысл тогда в беседе там? Если вопросы не задавать, что, аплодировать, что ли? Что он ответил? Ну, я вас прошу, там. Путин сказал, что это провокация. Вы Нет, допускаете, это... что это кто-то, не имеющий отношения к Путину? Кто Нет, это голос был такой, знаешь, вежливо официальный. Этот голос, ну, как бы ни с чем не спутаешь. К тому же всем позвонили. So yeah, supposedly there was a call from somebody and everybody that was at that table also got a call. But what I find the most amazing is that Putin's first reaction was to ask Yuri Shevchuk his name. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, I'm sorry, but like, I just refuse to believe that Vladimir Putin, as a St. Petersburg native, Leningrad native, does not know who Yuri Shevchuk is and has not been like a fan of Dedete growing up. 
or at least was aware of that pair, his band, at a certain point. I mean, it's pretty much impossible to not be. Even Zoomers in Russia know about this stuff. I just personally think that there's no chance that Putin did not know who this was. And so he's asking that question to humble him a little bit, to let him know that, you know, I'm so important that I don't even know who you are. And I just do find that really interesting, you know. However, it's only gonna get better from here on out. У меня несколько вопросов просто. Первое, свобода слова, то есть свобода прессы, свобода информации, потому что то, что сейчас творится в стране, это скорее сословная страна, тысячелетняя такая. Есть, у меня есть князей и бояр да, с мигалками, есть тягловый народ и пропасть огромная. Вы все это знаете. Единственный выход, чтобы все были равны перед законом. Yeah, so you can tell he's clearly going in right away. And once again, this was year 2010. Throughout the years in Russia, there's been a lot of people that have been noticing the suppression of freedom of speech in Russia and everything. People were seeing the trends that led Russia to where it is now. And 2011, for example, was a year of very huge protests in Russia. And obviously, with how presidents are treated in Russia, not everybody would be brave enough to say this to Putin's face. However, Yuri Shevchuk did. And I'm pretty sure you guys noticed how quiet the room got. <laughs> Это было все по-человечески, чтобы у нас была личная сторона, свободная, уважающая себя, и тогда поднимем патриотизм. Потому что патриотизм плакатом его не создашь. А у нас, я вижу, очень много, и я, я не один. Интеллигенция, очкарики, скажем так, мы видим очень много. Внешние проявления, попытка построения патриотизма, какой-то совести в стране путем гимнов и маршей, ну и так далее. Все это мы проходили, только гражданское общество. Только равенство всех перед законом, и вас, и меня, тогда вот здесь что-то начнется. Что мы будем строить и больницы, и помогать и детям, ну и вообще и нищим коллегам, старикам, и все это будет идти от души искренне и честно. Но для этого нужна свобода прессы, потому что ее сейчас нет, есть полторы газеты и там пол телевидения. Again, he's spitting bars, and we can clearly tell from Putin's demeanor that, you know, he's not really enjoying hearing this. <laughs> he was not expecting this. He thought this is just gonna be, you know, one of those regular stupid dinners we have to sit and pretend to be interested. And now this artist here is daring to speak up and challenge my narrative? I really do not think he's enjoying this. <laughs> Это не полемика даже, это те же марши и гимны. И на самом деле протестный электорат растет. Вы это тоже знаете, много недовольных в сложившейся ситуации. Как вы думаете, есть ли у вас в планах действительно серьезно, искренне, честно либерализация, демократизация настоящей страны, чтобы общественные организации не душились, чтобы мы не перестали бояться милиционера на улице. Потому что милиционер служит начальству сейчас, а не народу. Ну и начальству и своему карману. Да. Я вам искренне вот задаю этот вопрос и завершаю практическим вот таким вопросом. 31 мая будет марш несогласных в Питере. Он будет разгоняться или нет? Sure. Clearly, guys, we've seen Russia go in a very opposite direction. Wouldn't exactly call Russia the beacon of human rights where everybody is equal in front of the law right now, so... Ну, я могу вам дать то, что мы с ребятами тут сочинили вам, то, что происходит в стране, наше мнение. Хорошо, спасибо. Я обязательно посмотрю. Прежде всего, хочу сказать, что без нормального демократического развития будущего страны не будет. Это очевидный факт. Wow, guys, based Putin, I agree with Putin, crazy, crazy. It's more so not even his opinion, it's like a, his, it's like a self-fulfilling prophecy or whatever. I don't even know if that's the right phrase to use here, but he said that the country will have no future without democracy. And, uh, you know, you, everybody has their own opinions, but his future isn't really looking great from where I'm standing. And that's exactly why I'm not there right now. Because only in the free society, Человек может реализоваться, а реализуя себя, и страну развивает, и науку развивает, и производство развивает по самому высокому стандарту. Если этого нет, то наступают Чего последствия нет? стагнации. Это очевидный факт, и всеми понимают. I mean, <laughs> I'd prefer it if it was just stagnation, but it's degrading in a lot of ways to the point where we you know we're literally having conflicts between like different branches of the army and whatnot which leads to you know mutinies such as what Prigozhin did this sort of loss of the monopoly on violence by the government is that not a sign of a deteriorating country теперь вы говорите вот милиция служит таким только начальникам 
милиции всяких людей хватает. Это часть страны. И там не с Марса люди приехали. Там есть люди, которые верой и правдой служат своему народу. И не жалеют не только здоровья, и жизни своей не жалеют. И под пули идут. Да? Те же самые гаишники, которые мзду снимают и бабки стригут на дороге. Есть такие, но есть такие, которые детей своим телом закрывают, свою машину подставляют и погибают. Putin, as you might know, comes from a sort of a similar background, you know, KGB and whatnot. Secret police, you know, nevertheless, it's police. So he clearly definitely had to, you know, defend the name of his fellow defenders of uh, justice and law in Russia, because definitely that is what Russian police is. I mean, personally, for me, as a person with left-leaning views, I don't like the police that much in the first place either, but Russian police, I don't like them especially. Because no normal police force puts bottles up people's asses as a torture method, you know? I'm just saying. Мазать всех одним черным пёгтем считаю не несправедливым. Я не мажу, но есть такие, которые... Не, 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 вы, вы не мажете, но вы сказали, вы сказали, вы сказали, менты, они служат начальству, а не народу. Вы так сказали. Ну, да. Нет, Юра, Юра. Почему? Вот я хотел... Юра, да, Юра, да. Я иду на марш и Нет, нет, секундочку. Сейчас я иду на марш и согласен. Нас 500 человек. Две с половиной тысячи армалов. Мы дискутировать. Я кого-то убил. Слушай, я внимательно слушал и не перебивал. А то, что в дискуссии не получится, у нас получится базар. He's pissed, dude. He's pissed. I can clearly tell. <laughs> When Putin raises his voice to make his points, he's not used to people raising their voice to speak over him. Because the people he usually talks to and the people who he surrounds himself with, these are essentially always yes-men. First of all, in Russia, obviously everybody in the higher tiers of the governments, they're afraid of repressions and they're afraid of being kicked out of that inner circle, essentially, right? It's because everybody there has dirt on them. And also these people, they respect subordinacy, right? So they're very scared to tell, you know, the highest person in the government something that he would not like. But this is precisely why Russia miscalculated so badly, right? And why so many things in Russia are in disarray is because by the time some information goes through multiple levels of like higher ups and reaches the president's like, is the truth even there at that point? You know what I mean? So I assume that the people don't really tell him the full scope of the bad news. And also when he raises his voice, he's pretty used to people shutting their mouth and probably listening to him because, well, you gotta listen to the chef. Whereas Yuri Shevchuk is like, nah, screw this, I'm gonna talk to him like an equal human being. And clearly, I can tell that Putin got pretty uncomfortable, and he's clearly not used to this and is not having a good time. I think that it's unfair that everyone comes to the table. But the problem is there. We have such a level of social culture. Удостоверение, палку какую-нибудь в руки. Он сразу начинает раз, размахивать ей и пытаться зарабатывать на эти деньги. Но это характерно не только для милиции. Это характерно вообще любой сферы, где есть властные полномочия и возможность получить вот эту сумасшедшую ренту. Yes, but if we had a system that would actually uh, punish those people going out of line and misusing their power and using it for personal gain or destruction of other people's lives, if those people actually got persecuted, it would have been great. But uh, I just wonder why that doesn't really happen. And I just wonder whose fault it is. Must be the Russian mentality, you know, what can I say? По поводу марша не согласна. Да. There we go, there we go. Есть определенные правила. Они, эти правила, предусматривают, что такие мероприятия регулируются местными властями. Кроме тех людей, которые выходят на марш, есть и другие люди, о правах Once again, one thing Putin likes to do is that he essentially always removes any blame from himself. So he says that, for example, if protests are met with violence from the police, that is being decided by the local governments. Yes, of course, it's definitely not like every local government has to abide by the rules of the center in Russia. And all the instructions on how to tackle protests and how to arrest people, essentially, they come from up above, you know? Like, come on. Stuff like this is not decided by the local clerks in like the Chelyabinsk administration or whatever. If you decide to do the march without agreeing, I ask for forgiveness for the, maybe, too strong things. Let's say, in the hospital, where there will be a mess. No, 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 yes, yes, where there will be a mess for the children, let's say, the sick. Who will allow you to do this march? And you make the right choice that it's forbidden. No. And now, what do you want to do? Oh, boy. Let's go back to the hospital. Oh boy, oh my god. It broke out of them. That's something real that just came out. Not all this, you know, politeness and everything. He's like, no, I'm speaking now. But also, like, he's talking about anti-governmental protesters potentially doing protests inside of a hospital. Like, what is this? What kind of example is this? What, what is this? Now, you want to do it there, where, for example, people should go to work on the 
Да они вас там такими мутюгами покроют. И местные власти заодно. Very real scenario once again. So true. So true. Но это совсем не значит, что власть должна прикрываться теми вещами, о которых я говорил, и создавать условия невозможные к проявлению э, свободы слова. Well, it's happening, isn't it? And I mean, like, his whole point that, you know, protesters essentially don't have to obstruct the daily lives of, you know, everybody else. Yes, that is obviously the real logic behind all of it. For example, in Russia, when a kid comes out in a square alone with a single piece of paper, perhaps with even a, a single piece of paper that says literally nothing on it. Now, that is something that clearly obstructs, you know, the public and obstructs, you know, the traffic in the city and everything to a bad degree. So that is why you should arrest that kid. And that is why that kid should face potential jail time. Surely. Yes, I believe you. Once again, so true, guys. So true. Я надеюсь, что в Петербурге будет сделано именно так по уму, с правом для граждан выразить свое несогласие с политикой властей по тем или другим вопросам, но с тем, чтобы люди, которые будут участвовать в этой марше, не мешали другим, которые не хотят демонстрировать, а хотят просто добраться домой вовремя, хотят Putin does get questions about protests here and there sometimes, and every time essentially he says that yes, protests are important, and in Russia we definitely protect the freedom of speech and people's rights to uh, voice, you know, their disagreement with the governments. Clearly, yes, that's happening. But the protesters need to make sure to not, and then he comes up with like a new story. Why we actually need to control protests very tightly. Very classic. Once again, nothing out of the ordinary as a guy who grew up in Russia and was, you know, seeing this guy on TV for his entire life. I am not surprised at all. I want you to understand. For me, I am sure for other representatives of the government, it doesn't help. It helps. If I see that people came out not only to shoot themselves, but to be honest with themselves, but to say something separate, concrete, to show some painful points on which the government should pay attention. What is wrong here? Thank you, I have to say. Yeah, dude, once again, Putin is just such a freedom-loving guy who loves to get criticized, and he loves protesters that actually points out real issues in the country. He loves them, dude. That is why there's such great freedom of protest right now in Russia. I mean, I understand it's been 14 years, but clearly, for these 14 years, Russia has been working to become even more free, so now it's amazing. Oh my god, it's like he has this sort of uh, list of pre-written chat GPT ramblings about democracy and he just reads them off every time he gets uh, asked a question like this. And I've been seeing this for 20 years now and I'm probably gonna be seeing it for many, many more. Somebody please, like, end my misery. <laughs> <laughs> Тоталитарный, авторитарный, с одним, с одной партией, с одним гимном, с одной мыслью. А светлый гимн действительно один, да? I mean, yeah, this is a little sad in retrospect, isn't it? Because he's basically describing, you know, he's talking about our kids. I was 12 years old when this video was shot, so uh, I'm essentially the kids he's talking about too. The children of Russia. And yes, I can tell that today the children of Russia are living in exactly the country that he's describing here, which is, you know, it was the absolute worst case scenario back in 2010, when it still looked like there's a little bit of an opening for Russia and a little bit of a chance for Russia, but uh, now that worst case scenario is our Z reality, so... Uh, I love my life, you guys. Или в светлый, демократичный, где действительно все равны перед законом. Все, ничего больше не нужно. Но, к сожалению, пока этого нет. Но очень хотелось бы, чтобы наши дети жили в этой стране и выздоравливали. Какой тост, такой напиток. Да, да, да. Yeah, so as far as I understand that we're drinking water there, so that's why Putin made that joke, saying that, yeah, that toast wasn't great, just like, the, you know, we're drinking water instead of uh, champagne or whatever. Yeah, I just wonder why Putin thought that that toast was not great. Maybe because deep down on the inside, he definitely disagreed and he had other plans. So yeah, guys, in this video, I just wanted to demonstrate to you what happens when Vladimir Putin, a person who is never put in a position where he's in front of the camera and he feels uncomfortable or where he's actually being asked a question that he did not expect and a question that he right off the cuff doesn't have a refutal to, he does not seem very comfortable and in fact he actually seems quite agitated and quite annoyed. And in my opinion, once again, this just shows what kind of situation Russia is in with the leadership because at this point I guess, why are we surprised that Russia has become such an oppressive country which has huge crackdown on free speech and free media that criticizes the governments? Well, I guess it's because when it comes to personalities that run the Russian government, these people are not really used to seeing any criticism and listening to any opposing opinions literally to their face. 
space. So it only seems logical that these exact same people would ban any public expressions of those exact opinions and those exact, you know, uncomfortable questions. Because really, they just don't have an honest answer to any of it. So yes, guys, this is pretty much the state of current Russia, and I just thought that this would be a pretty interesting anecdote. I guess that's gonna be pretty much it for today's video. If you guys did enjoy it, then please make sure to slap the like on it. And as well, guys, if you do like what I do on this channel, if you want to support me financially, then you can go over to the link down in the description and become a YouTube member. It's basically like YouTube's own version of Patreon, it's like a monthly donation type thing and it helps me out a lot, so you also get access to special emojis, which is pretty cool. Or if you want to do a one-time donation, then you can do a super thanks underneath this video. But yeah guys, thank you so much for watching today's video and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.